Ever hear about the college student who invented time travel? Well, sort of. Let's take a journey back to the hallowed halls of academia, where our hero, let's call him Tim, was attempting to juggle his course load, part-time job, and a social life that would make a reality TV star blush. Now, Tim was the kind of guy who couldn't find his socks if they were on his feet, let alone keep track of three major life components. One day, after a particularly chaotic week, Tim disappeared from the public eye. His friends assumed he was hibernating after an all-nighter, his professors assumed he was skipping class again, and his boss, well, let's just say he was on the brink of firing Tim. Days turned into a week, and then, just like the groundhog on a sunny February morning, Tim emerged from his burrow, or in this case, his dorm room. Except something was different, Tim, who couldn't remember his own class schedule, was suddenly on top of everything. His assignments were turned in on time, he was the first to clock in at work, and he still managed to be the life of every party. This miraculous transformation had everyone asking the same question, Tim, how did you do it? With a mischievous twinkle in his eye, Tim would lean in and whisper, I've invented time travel. Just imagine the surprise on their faces, time travel, really? But as Tim explained his invention, it became evident that he wasn't zipping back and forth through the ages. No, Tim had discovered the miraculous power of a planner. He had broken down his day into manageable chunks, allocating time for studies, work, and even a little bit of fun. This newfound organization was his time machine, allowing him to be everywhere he needed to be, without the stress and chaos that once ruled his life. So, there you have it. The tale of the time-traveling student. A story of transformation, productivity, and a little bit of humor. Turns out, his time machine was just a well-organized planner. Who'd have thought? Then there's the tale of the socialite who was so popular, she had to clone herself. Meet Bella, a young woman with a bursting social calendar that would make even the most seasoned party-goer's head spin. Invitations flooded her mailbox daily, her phone pinged with constant event reminders, and her social media notifications were a never-ending stream of RSVP requests. Bella was so active on the social scene that her friends often joked she was in two places at once. The whispers started spreading. Does Bella have a twin? No, maybe she's cloned herself. Giggles and jests filled the air. Bella, being the good sport she was, played along. She'd laugh and say, you caught me, I've cloned myself. How else could I possibly be at the art gala and the charity ball at the same time? But the reality was far from the joke. Bella was exhausted running from one event to another, trying to keep up with her own popularity. She was so caught up in saying yes to every invitation that she had forgotten the power of a simple no. Then one day, Bella had an epiphany. She didn't need a clone, she needed boundaries. So she did the unthinkable. She started saying no. The first time was hard, the second time less so. By the third time, it was a revelation. Suddenly, Bella had time, time to breathe, time to relax, and time to actually enjoy the events she chose to attend. The world didn't end when she declined an invitation. In fact, her friends admired her for setting boundaries and prioritizing her time. The punchline to Bella's story? She didn't need to be in two places at once. She didn't need to clone herself. She just needed to master the art of prioritizing and learn the magic of a well-placed no. In the end, she didn't need a clone. She just needed to learn the magic word no. Ever met a procrastinator so dedicated they could write a book about it? Well, one man did. Meet Jay. Jay was such a procrastinator he could have claimed a PhD in the art of putting things off. His procrastination was so legendary that he often joked about penning an epic saga titled The Chronicles of Tomorrow, How I Plan to Do Everything, Eventually. He was the king of tomorrow, the ruler of the land of later. If procrastination were an Olympic sport, Jay would have brought home the gold. In his kingdom of delay, Jay was the master of all he surveyed. But like every ruler, Jay had a nemesis. His was the ticking clock. Each second that passed was a reminder of the things left undone. The projects due tomorrow, the laundry piling up, the dishes in the sink. His kingdom was in chaos, and Jay knew he needed to make a change. So one day, Jay decided to turn his life around. He realized that tomorrow was a promise, but today was a gift. That's why they call it the present, right? 
He decided he was going to seize the day and get things done. But in true Jay fashion, he didn't just want to overcome procrastination, he wanted to conquer it. He started by setting small achievable goals. He decided to do the dishes right after dinner, not tomorrow. He committed to finishing his projects well before the deadline, not at the 11th hour. He began to realize that doing things now freed up his tomorrow. He was no longer the ruler of the land of later, he was becoming the emperor of now. And as Jay started to see the changes in his life, he realized he had a story to tell. A story not about procrastination, but about overcoming it. He sat down and started to write. He wrote about his journey from the king of tomorrow to the emperor of now. He wrote about the small changes that had a big impact. He wrote about his transformation from a procrastinator to a productive person. So, the procrastinator ended up writing a book after all, just not the one he thought he'd write. You've heard of billionaires and their secrets to success, right? Well, here's one you might not expect. Meet Sir Reginald Poshington, a fictitious billionaire who made his fortune in the highly competitive world of luxury toothpick manufacturing. Now, when you imagine a billionaire, you might picture someone constantly on the go, always in meetings or jet-setting around the globe. But Sir Reginald? He's got a secret weapon that keeps him fresh and on top of his game. A nap in the afternoon. Yes, you heard it right, a nap. But hold on, don't rush off to snooze just yet. This isn't about the nap itself. It's about the discipline of taking regular breaks. Sir Reginald firmly believes that his afternoon siesta is the secret source to his success. And let's be honest, who are we to argue with a billionaire toothpick mogul? Picture this, a typical day in the life of Sir Reginald. He's overseeing the production of gold-plated toothpicks, negotiating deals with international distributors, and brainstorming new flavors for the upcoming toothpick line. It's fast-paced, it's intense, it's exhausting. So every day, at precisely 2.30 in the afternoon, he steps away from it all. He retreats to his personal quarters, puts on his silk pajamas, and takes a 45-minute nap. He wakes up refreshed, revitalized, and ready to tackle the rest of his day with gusto. The key here isn't the nap. It's the discipline of taking a break, of stepping back from the hustle and bustle to recharge. It's about understanding that you're not a machine, and that sometimes to be more productive, you need to take a step back and rest. So next time you're feeling overwhelmed, remember Sir Reginald and his afternoon siesta. It's not about laziness, it's about working smarter, not harder. So, the billionaire's secret to success? Regular breaks? Who knew? Scene script? Time management is a serious business, but let's end things on a lighter note. Now picture this. A time-traveling student, an overbooked socialite, a procrastinator turned productive, and a billionaire all find themselves stranded on a deserted island. No, this isn't the start of an unusual sitcom, it's a time management joke. So, these four friends, each with their unique time management skills, decide to pull together their resources. The time-traveling student, with their knack for planning ahead, takes charge of the future. They start mapping out the days, weeks, even months, creating a long-term survival strategy. After all, they've always been good at seeing the big picture. Meanwhile, the overbooked socialite, who's used to juggling multiple commitments, handles the daily routine. They set up a system of tasks, making sure everyone has a job to do. They organize the fishing, the cooking, the shelter building. There's never a dull moment on this island. Then there's the procrastinator turned productive. They've mastered the art of making the most of their time, so they take care of the immediate needs. Need a fire? They're on it. Fresh water? Consider it done. They're the go-to person for getting things done, right here, right now. And last but not least, the billionaire who knows the value of time better than anyone, keeps the morale high. They remind everyone that time is the most valuable resource they have and not to waste it. They inspire the group to keep going, to keep working together because every second counts. Eventually, with their combined time management skills, they build a raft, catch enough food and signal a passing ship. They're rescued. Their time on the island might have been challenging, but it was also a testament to the power of good time management. And that's why they say, time flies when you're having fun, or in this case, time's up when you're well organized.